The author of The Cross in the Shadow of the Crescent is urging believers in the United States to be in prayer for their fellow Christians in the Middle East who face death and persecution at the hands of ISIS and other Islamic extremists. The Rev. Dr. Erwin Lutzer, the senior pastor of Moody Church, spoke with IllinoisFamily.org News. Well, I think, first of all, of course, we have to try to enter into their pain. It says in the book of Hebrews, We should uh, connect with those who are in prison as if we are in prison with them. Now, we can't do that directly, but we can carry these believers in our hearts and we can pray for them. But the other thing that we can do that I think is critical is to learn what might be happening to us. I think it's time for the Christian church to begin to think seriously about persecution. The fact that throughout history, Christians often have been killed for their faith and to ask ourselves some hard questions as to whether or not we'd be willing to be killed for our faith. And there are many Christians today who won't even pray in a restaurant because they think that, you know, they don't want to be seen as identified with Jesus. Well, how are they going to do when persecution begins? Dr. Lutzer will headline the IFI Islam in America, a Christian Response Forum, May 7th at Medina Baptist Church. I think that uh, when it comes to witnessing to Muslims, you know, in the book that I wrote entitled The Cross in the Shadow of the Crescent, every chapter ends with a conversion story. And every chapter in these stories has a common element. And the common element is love and compassion. And when we are able to see them not as our enemies, but to recognize that many of them would like to be able to interact with us, Uh, they are uh, people who want to question our faith and to help us understand theirs, I think those kinds of bridges can be built. It cannot be built simply with one group standing over here and the other standing over there without someone saying, it's time we built some bridges. And the thing that we need to communicate is simply this, that we love you even if we don't love your religion and your ideology, and to be able to make that separation. Because truth and love are not in conflict, and we as a church have to be able to balance those two. But that's the way Muslims come to Christ, is through the witness of believers. How should Christians respond to the growing influence of Islam in our culture, in our government, and in our politics? First of all, what we need to do is to realize what is happening. It's happening before our eyes and most Christians don't know it. Here's the big deception among Christians and others in America. The idea is that if we're not having terrorist attacks, everything is okay. So, you know, we've had the Boston bombing and we've had some other experiences and we think to ourselves, well, as long as we aren't being attacked, all is well. That is just dead wrong. The fact is that in 2004, the FBI uncovered the Brotherhood's plan for America. It did not include terrorism, because terrorism often has a backlash. It had to do with the infiltration of our institutions, the infiltration of our universities, the building of mosques throughout America, uh, such things as banking and what have you, and especially education on every level. So in these ways, what we're finding is, is the intrusion of Islam and then insisting on their rights. Should Christians find out where their candidates for elected office stand on Islam before they vote? Absolutely. All of our candidates, we should know where they stand on Islam. Because what we cannot do is to have the brotherhood infiltrate our national security, and yet that is happening. And that's not my opinion, that's the opinion of people in Washington who are actually working in national security. The simple fact is, if we aren't protected from the brotherhood and its designs for America, it really, in the end, isn't going to make too much of a difference, no matter what it is else that we might be protected from. So we should all know their opinion of Islam. Here's the problem. Because in America today we have taken a stance of submission to Islam, politicians, unfortunately, can only speak well of Islam. 
So when we say that we should know where our candidates stand, we have to recognize that we have to pick up a lot of signals here because most of them are not going to come out directly and tell us about some of the concerns they have about the Islamic religion. Pastor Lutzer, thank you for your generosity. God bless you. Thank you, Monty.